Hello there, everybody. My name is Bloomer Brown, and welcome back at long, long, long last to Bloomer Brown Plays Kerbal Space Program, a video gaming Let's Play series that has been on hiatus on this channel for a really long time. Uh, and in fact, I have been taking a little bit of time out from the channel myself. Um, let's just say for now that it has been a really long, busy year to summer, and to be honest, I am glad that it is almost over for me. Um, that is not going to be the subject of today's video. Today's video is going to be concerning itself with the 1.2 pre-release of Kerbal Space Program, which has seen the addition of some uh, pretty cool new features by Squad, including the uh, new ComNet feature, which requires us to keep uh, radio contact with our unmanned probes at all times in order to uh, keep them under control. And this brings me to this rather squat and chubby looking rocket that is making its way uh, skyward as we speak. Inside that bulbous fairing we have a constellation of three satellites uh, bound for geosynchronous or carbosynchronous orbit uh, in order to uh, set ourselves up something of a communications network in orbit above carbon. Now there is no real uh, advantage to setting something like this up in the stock game uh, and unlike there was in the uh, remote tech mod uh, because of course squad have popped in some uh, ground stations ground relay stations on the surface of carbon itself so that when we are on the opposite side of the planet from the KSE we will still be able to maintain radio communications uh, but we are all space nerds here and uh, the first thing that everybody wants to do with something like this is of course set up a geosynchronous uh, satellite network uh, which is what I am going to be doing today. I think it is possible in the options menu to switch off the um, additional ground stations and the launch profile that I'm going to be following today is probably going to uh, enable people that have done that or people playing with the older remote tech mod uh, to set up a functioning uh, satellite relay network that is going to be of some use to them. Um, so yes, back to the uh, actual launching of this itself. Uh, you'll probably notice me taking the uh, setting the moon as a target there and using the ascending and descending node to try and zero out my inclination because of course the moon has uh, zero inclination with respect to the axis of rotation of Kerbin and so it makes it a perfect uh, target uh, for setting ourselves up with a nice equatorial orbit. Not that that is super critical uh, because uh, the satellite dishes and antennae that we have are capable of uh, target tracking. Which brings me to a mechanic that is slightly different from remote tech. Uh, with that mod we would have to uh, ensure that uh, each of our dishes on our communication satellite were actually pointed at each other. Uh, with the ComNet system uh, the dishes, the relay dishes, automatically target each other and uh, relay the signal to the uh, active vessel. Uh, so in that respect it is uh, a little bit easier than remote tech and in fact some people including myself are referring to this as remote tech light. Uh, there is also no uh, time delay associated with the uh, signal. Uh, the speed of light is seemingly infinite and uh, communication is instantaneous which does make it a little bit easier for uh, landing rovers and controlling them in real time on the surface of planets. And I assume that all of this was done in the interest of game balance and a sort of giving new players a at least a chance at uh, managing to uh, get to orbit and play the game. And speaking of getting to orbit, our apoapsis is increasing rather quickly now and we are uh, coming close to the 2868.7 kilometers we need uh, to get ourselves into a geosynchronous altitude. Uh, our first stage has burned out and we're jettisoning the fairing there, taking a first look at this uh, lovely unmanned satellite uh, deployment system and we're throttling up the engine. Um, now if you are a fan of Scott Manley uh, you will probably realize that this is something of uh, an inefficient use of Delta V uh, with this uh, very steep climb. Um, there is a method to my madness though. Um, my intention is to ensure that the periapsis stays inside the planet and 
ensures that this huge uh, first stage booster uh, drops harmlessly through the well, drops through the atmosphere and is destroyed, uh, possibly plopping something into the ocean without hopefully uh, killing anybody or injuring anyone. Um, and also, I want to keep myself from going too far east with respect to the KSE. Uh, I want to keep this uh, first satellite uh, in orbit just above the KSE. Um, which is kind of important if you uh, had your ground stations disabled or if of course you were playing with remote tech because uh, line of sight communication is really rather important and as we cruise up to our apoapsis with a little bit of help from time acceleration our spacecraft will start to uh, slow down and the plan of course rotates at a continuous speed and so the KSC will line up pretty much underneath us. Uh, we set up a quick maneuver node here uh, in order to try and get this thing into a proper orbit. Now I am not going to put it into a complete geosynchronous orbit at this time. What I'm going to do is because we have three satellites is put it into a four hour orbit. Meaning that as the um, employment rig uh, reaches Apoaps, there will and we deploy each of the satellites, there will be kind of a two hour delay between them and hopefully we will be able to kind of get them into a nice uh, equilateral triangle around the planet uh, when deployed. So with our little burn setup we are aiming for a periapsis of somewhere a little over 1,200 kilometers. Uh, and with a little fine tuning I managed to set myself up pretty nicely for the deployment of the first satellite. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is deploy some of these solar panels and also the communications antenna, uh, which I mostly included for completeness and to make the probe look the part. Uh, because of course these probe cores do come with their own antenna built in and we would be able to communicate with mission control via the upper stage of the launch rig. And there we go. Uh, our first satellite is away pushed off with a little kick from that stack separator and as we drift away I move mouse over my Apple apps uh, because I haven't got time for maneuver nodes and I throttle up only to realize I haven't activated the engine uh, there we go that's a little bit better and we are off on our way cruising up to a geosynchronous orbit uh, <laughs> now this burn is a longish one due to the tiny thrust of that single ant engine uh, mounted on the satellite and I have decided to like, time accelerate a little bit for you so that you don't have to sit through a 30 minute video padded out with a uh, filler and here you can see me do a little bit of uh, radial thrusting in order to correct my apoapsis and periapsis. And I must have been pretty happy with the result. I can't actually remember the final numbers off the top of my head. And to be honest with you, I'm not too fussed about getting pinpoint accuracy. So all that remains to be done is to finish deploying the rest of those solar panels that will power this artificial moon for a very long, long time to come. And jumping forward in time, we can see that the deployment rig has almost completed its first orbit of Kerbin and is coming back to Apoapsis. So that means it is close to time to deploy the next satellite. Uh, now this becomes a bit of a rinse and repeat exercise. I deploy the solar panels and the comms antenna, activate the engine and decouple and set myself up a little bit of a maneuver node there just to get some kind of uh, semblance of accuracy on the uh, actual burn. Uh, now the main thing to be concerned with time-wise um, is of course making sure that you jump back to the deployment vessel each time it uh, pops up to apoapsis. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will miss your window and your satellites will be somewhat out of phase. Now already we can see the uh, spacing on those satellites is actually looking pretty good. Uh, once the third one comes up, uh, we should be in a reasonable configuration uh, to allow our satellites to maintain a direct line of sight with each other. And another slick swipe effect brings us forward to the deployment of the third satellite. Uh, this is probably as good a time as any to talk about the ranging of these dishes. 
So Comnet takes a different approach to uh, ranging than what we are used to in remote tech. Uh, basically we have two numbers to work with, a value assigned to each antenna or dish and a value assigned to the tracking station. And in order to calculate the effective range of the communication setup, uh, you simply multiply these two numbers together and then take the square root and that is your range. Uh, it is also worth noting that relay dishes can boost the signal if they're in range, and of course upgrading your tracking station will also boost the effective range of its communications capability. Now, if you do happen to find yourself out of contact with the KSC and have a crewed vessel within range with a pilot aboard, he or she will be able to assume control of the active vessel, uh, though that does sound like a situation that you would need to plan for, unless of course maybe you had established a base or something uh, that just so happens to be within range. And there we have it, our final satellite is fully deployed and now all that remains to be done is to deorbit the deployment rig itself. Uh, so we switch back to the vessel, uh, point ourselves retrograde and uh, throttle up only to have the engine cut out uh, mysteriously. Well, it's not too mysterious, we've actually run out of fuel. Uh, while testing this mission, I uh, discovered a couple of issues uh, with the actual satellites themselves, and I corrected them. Of course, I didn't think to uh, fly a test mission again, and so the upper stage of this uh, deployment rig is actually a little underbuilt and we're probably going to have to do a, a little bit of a mission up here to bring it down at some point but that will actually probably be in the official release of uh, version 1.2 uh, because it is due to drop uh, today uh, which probably makes me one of the last youtubers to actually do a video on the pre-release uh, not as if I didn't have enough time um, anyway that wraps it up for today uh, thank you very much for tuning in uh, you have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube, and I will see you next time.